Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So today I'm going to be talking about something that I think everyone would like and that's getting a pay rise. Um, I can only really speak from my personal experience but yeah I'll give you uh, a bit of advice based on yeah the way I've gone about it over the years. So it all starts, it actually starts from within you. Forget about the boss and how much you're hating because he doesn't pay you enough money. It starts from within and it starts from the amount of work that you do and can you go home at the end of every day and I mean every single day and say I gave that my all. When you don't have sick days just because you've got a bit of a sore throat, you go in there and you do the best you can do every single day. When you get home and you're physically tired because you have worked your ass off every single day, that's when you, you should be pretty confident to get a uh, pay rise. When you're not the one that's reworking every fifth or even tenth job that you do because you've got the color wrong, you've got runs in it that you couldn't polish out, um, you haven't done your prep work right, or whatever of the many different mistakes that you can make in spray painting, it is um, it is a bit a uh, bit of a tricky trade, you know. That there's a lot to learn, and it's um, something that you could you could watch all of my videos. And this is why I'm not worried about my job in the slightest about making these videos, um, because I know that you're not going to be able to do as good as me just because you've watched my videos. You know, most of the people that I've um, I've worked with over the years, you try telling them things, and you do they don't even do the tips that you give them anyway. Whereas I've always um, watched other people actively, seen what they do, asked lots of questions, I'll try something that they do, if it works, great, I'll use it and I'll take that and put it into my bag of tricks. Um, if, if it doesn't work for me or if I don't like the idea of it, um, well then I won't use it. Um, but at the end of the day, you have to know that you're worth that little bit more money to your boss, you know. Um, if you give them an ultimatum and you say, hey, if you don't give me an extra hundred dollars a week, I'm leaving, you have to be ready to leave, you know. Um, and you actually also have to be um, confident in your own abilities that you can get another job or have another job lined up. You know, I'm not telling you to go out there and tell your boss, um, you know, give me an extra hundred bucks a week or I'm out of here and then you're, you're going to lose your job. No, I'm saying you should know at the end of the day whether or not you are one of the better painters or the best painter in the shop um, and if you are and you've been on your wage for a couple of years well then go up and ask them for another 50 or 100 dollars um, at the end of the week and the way I say it like if you are the best painter in the shop look what's the worst thing that can happen is that they say look we can't afford it at the moment and you're, you're in the same position as where you would have been anyway so that, that can't hurt to, uh, it can never hurt to let them at least know that you're after a bit more if you are good at what you do. I've noticed over the years that spray painters do actually get paid a little bit more than panel beaters and I think part of the reason for that is that it's a finished product. Like um, the difference that a company can make, like a panel shop can make off of a good spray painter compared to an average spray painter is actually quite big. Um, like I see, I have seen over the years, lots of people alongside me, my co-workers, you know, and you look at the end of that week and you, you'd be like, well, I've done 15 to 20 cars this week, they've done 5 to 10, and those 5 to 10 that they've done, they've done them again and again and again. Um, I usually run around three jobs a day, three or four jobs, depending on the size. Um, you know, bigger jobs obviously are going to take a little bit longer. Like, there's been times that... I've been working on a job and I look over at the other people at the um, other side of the workshop, they're gas bagging because they think it's a Monday. They think, oh, they look around the workshop, they're like, oh, we've only got two or three cars here. It's a Monday. We're pretty quiet. We can gas bag. I know what's coming in from the panel shop. All it takes is a quick look into the panel shop. You can see that there's 20 cars lined up there. Those cars are going to come in and if you don't get the two or three cars that you do have done, you're going to be inundated with work. Um, so the bosses, they know that, like they're not stupid. You might think, oh, the boss, they don't come down all the time. They don't know what's going on, you know. Um, they do, they know who does what jobs. They know who reworks jobs and stuff like that. So yeah, at the end of the day, it's going to come back down to you and you will know if you're worth more money. I'm ready for a pay rise, actually. I haven't just got one. I'm not making this video to brag to everyone that I've just gotten a pay rise and this is how I did it, you know. But this is how I will do it by knowing that I'm worth a little bit more, you know. Um, yeah, like, 
I probably could give the boss an ultimatum if I wanted to, but I don't want to do that. I could probably turn around and say, look, give me another 100 bucks a week or I'm out of here, and they'd say, yep, there it is, please, please stay, you know. Um, but I, I know, and, and, and like that's not without being arrogant. If you know that, that that's where you stand and you know that you're like the cornerstone or the, the pillar that holds up that paint shop, they, they make that money off you anyway, so they'd be silly to let you go um, over $100 a week. One thing that's unfortunately becoming more predominant in this industry is uh, like logging people's work and you'll get like a time card for each job and they'll allocate X amount of hours for each job. At this point in my career, I refuse to do that. I don't want to be monitored the entire time. Um, I want my boss to trust me, um, trust me and just know that I'm going to work my ass off. I don't want him to come down because I've had it once before, not long after I turned tradesman. I was working in this shop with the, the clock on to each job system. And what it ended up doing was the panel beaters were killing it. They were making heaps of bonuses at the end of each week, but they were half finishing their jobs. They'd then bring it into the paint shop. You've clocked on to the job, and you're calling the panel beaters down, and you're saying, you're going to strip that door for me? You're going to finish doing your repair? You're on my time now. you know. So I refuse to work in those shops. It turns uh, people against each other. The way I like to do it is help each other out. Like if... If I'm in the paint shop, if, I, if I'm working away and the next guy needs a hand with the colour um, and I'm, you know, I'd finish my work for the day, say it's 3.30, I've got half an hour before I go home, I'll just say, hey man, go go prep your panel, panels up, I'll uh, match the colour for you, no worries. But in a shop where you're, every single minute is being logged and tracked, are you going to give your workmates half an hour? No, stuff that, I'm in it for myself, that's going to cost me money. So I refuse to work in those kind of shops. Even if I could make an extra 100 or $200 working in one of those shops per week, and I possibly could, depending on um, the way they structure it. Although I have heard that um, some of them, like, they'll move the goalposts. When you start off there, you, you make a nice amount of money, um, and then they cut the hours down that you're allowed for each panel or for each job or whatever it be. So, yeah, I don't like that that greediness side of it and where big business is starting to creep into um, my industry. Um, I want to keep it pure and, uh, yeah, just enjoy going to work and spray painting, enjoy the people that I work with and that. And, uh, yeah get paid accordingly you know I'm, I'm not a, I'm not after like two thousand dollars a week when I'm not doing that amount of work like when I'm not worth that and I don't want to be costing my boss money um, I just want something that's fair for all of us so and I have actually done that before I have quit my job because I don't believe I didn't believe I was getting enough money I actually didn't have another job lined up um, I walked up to the manager at the time. I said, I believe I'm worth an extra hundred dollars a week. If you don't give it to me, I'm out of here. Uh, he came back to me within an hour and, and he said, I'm sorry, we can't do that at this point. Um, I actually had the next three days off on uh, sick pay. When I came back on the Monday, they said, sorry, we no longer have a position for you. Um, and you can leave now. So technically, yeah, I was sacked, but I, I class that as, um, quitting really I, I just milked those extra three uh, sick days out of them because I knew I was uh, getting underpaid and I was willing to walk um, so out of 12 years of work I was only unemployed for however long it took me to drive from Vermont in Melbourne up to Springvale or Roeville I left that job after getting the sack technically getting the sack I drove straight up to an ex bosses of mine um, he had just started up his own business, um, Police Road Panels it was, there in uh, Springvale I think it was, around there anyway. Um, and I just went up there to say good day and tell him what happened. And he's like, oh man, I need this colour match. But I'm like, I wanted a bit of time off. Like, I didn't, I didn't want to get a job straight away. I was ready to have a couple of weeks off, you know. Like, I knew I'd be able to get a job when I wanted one. Like, there's always work around in my industry. Like, that's one thing I'm uh, pretty confident about. Like, even if, uh, sometimes you might have to get a job that pays a little bit less than what you'd like. But for me, I'll always be able to get a job around Australia. And this trade is relatively recession proof. Because people are, uh, even though like um, the end, sorry, the economy may slow down a little bit, people are still going to be driving cars, and they're still going to be paying their insurance on their cars. So they might, like, you might uh, lose a little bit of private work because people don't have that spare cash to splash around, but they're still going to pay their insurance most of the time, anyway. Um, so yeah, I, I did quit my job, and yeah, for for 12 years I was unemployed. 
So as I said, however long it took me to drive, which is probably about 20 to 30 minutes. So I, uh, I held that as a badge of honor for many years and I was pretty proud of that. And if, if you're a decent tradesman in just about any trade, there's pro you probably should be able to um, have yeah, a similar thing for yourself as well. You know, like um, if, if you're a good worker, you should personally be relatively recession proof. I think I am. Um, I think that there's uh, other painters that will go before me well I know that there are other painters that will go before me hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video and I hope you've uh, gained something out of it if this makes you a better tradesman or a better person in any way well then the video has served its purpose and until the next video get out there and paint some shit thanks for watching and this has been another Gunland production goodbye